This is a quick video over the batch reactor design equation. And what we're going to do here is we're going to write an equation for the amount of time it takes for a batch reactor to convert convert some amount of A. So maybe we have A going to B. Now we got to define a conversion. So it's conversion we're going to define real quick. And we're going to say this is X. So the conversion. So what that means is the moles of A reacted, moles of A reacted, did, divided by the moles of A fed. And we're going to say this is XA. So that's the conversion of A. Now, if we wanted to find the moles of A consumed, well then if we know the initial amount of moles of A, so this is the moles of A we fed the reactor and just put in there, and and we multiply that by XA, then by de definition, this is the moles, moles of A uh, consumed, consumed, or simply reacted. So now if we want to find the moles of A in the reactor, so just NA, well that's equal to, that's equal to NA not minus the amount of uh, moles of A that were consumed. So then we get NA not times XA. So this will give us the moles of A in the reactor at this time, or at this conversion. So we actually haven't even gotten to the time. So if we wanted to convert 20% uh, of the reaction, then XA would be 0 .2, 0 0.2, and then this would be 80% uh, of whatever the initial amount of A was. So we can rewrite that as NA not 1 minus XA. So that's another way of writing it. Now if we wanted to know the change in the moles of A with respect to time, that's equal to the reaction rate of A times the volume. So remember, this is the uh, the change in the moles of A with respect to time and volume, the reaction rate is. So if we multiply that by the volume, we get DNA over DT. Now we're going to get that a negative, or multiplying both by negative 1, and that's just to allow this to be a positive number. So if we do that, and we then differentiate this equation, this equation, we get DNA all over DT is equal to, well, this is a constant, so that's 0, 0 minus, well, again, this is constant, so NA not. So if that's a constant, is XA a constant? No, XA changes with time. So then we have DXA all over DT. So now we can actually plug this part in for that. So we'll plug that right there. And what we get is we get a positive NA, or the initial amount of A in the reactor that we feed into the reactor, times DXA all over dt is equal to a negative reaction rate A times V, and with a little bit of rearrangement, we'll just multiply both sides by dt, so we get dt is equal to Na0 times, times dxA all over a negative RAV. So all I, mul all I did was divide this by RAV, this by RAV, a negative RAV, and multiplied by DT, and then flipped the equation. That's all I did. So now, if we integrate, if we integrate this, so let us integrate this. So let's integrate it. And let's integrate it from 0 to T and 0 to X. Because if no time has passed, no, no conversion has occurred, so it's still 0. So now the time it takes for a conversion to occur so t is equal to the integral, and really this is constant, so we can just move this out here. So we get n a naught times the integral of x, or 0 to x, d x a all over negative r a times the volume of the batch reactor. So this is our equation for calculating the time it takes to convert 
uh, 10%, 20%, or 30% of some initial amount of A.